Jacques-Yves Cousteau was born in Saint-André de Dubzac, France on June 11, 1910. He displayed a love for water from a young age, and in his early teen years, he began to develop an interest in machines. When he was 10, he spent a year in New York and popularized the two-wheeled European roller skates. At 11, he built a model crane, and at 13, he built a three-foot battery-operated car. It was around this time that he also became fascinated with film, saved his allowance, and then purchased a home movie video camera. As you might imagine, stuck in the confines of his grade school peer activity, Cousteau became troubled and bored. After breaking 17 windows at school, he was expelled, causing his parents to send him to a strict boarding school in Alsace. In this new environment, he excelled, and upon graduation, entered the Naval Academy in Brest. He then joined the French Navy in 1933 as a gunnery officer. Cousteau had been training to become a pilot, but a serious car accident ended his aviation career and weakened his arms. He was transferred to sea duty and began swimming to strengthen his muscles, whereupon in 1936, while exercising in the ocean, with the clarity of swimming goggles, he rediscovered his love for the sea and began a lifelong, unwavering obsession. In 1937, Cousteau married Simone Melchior and they would have two sons, Jean-Michel and Philippe. Two years later, Cousteau fought for the French in World War II, spying against the Italian Navy. He earned several medals during the war, yet still found time to continue his work with diving. He conducted explorations underwater and developed one of the first breathing machines in order to dive for long periods of time. In 1943, he and French engineer Emile Gagnon had perfected an aqualung, which enabled divers to stay underwater for several hours. His self-contained underwater breathing apparatus, or scuba, also came in handy during World War II to locate and remove enemy mines. In 1948, Cousteau was named Capitaine de Corvette of the French Navy, and two years later he became president of the French Oceanographic Campaigns. Also in 48, he purchased a ship called Calypso to further his own personal underwater experiments and explorations. The ship was a former minesweeper that he modified into an oceanographic vessel, custom fitting it with instruments for diving and scientific research. The Calypso united the maritime and diving skills of her crew with the scientific expertise of academic scientists who were invited on board for study. For years, Cousteau gathered plants and animals and photographed the underwater world. In order to finance the exploration and increase awareness of deep undersea study, Cousteau gave purpose to another one of his passions, filmmaking. Over the course of his life, Cousteau produced over 120 films and more than 50 books. Both The Silent World and World Without Sun won Academy Awards for Best Documentary, and The Silent World received the first ever Palme d'Or at Cannes. His books include The Living Sea, Dolphins, and Jacques Cousteau, The Ocean World. In addition to films and books, in 1968, The Ocean Explorer was solicited to create a TV series, and for the next eight years, the undersea world of Jacques Cousteau introduced the world to undersea life. Sharks, whales, dolphins, sunken treasure, coral reefs, the series which starred himself, his family, and hundreds of sea creatures from around the world, ran for eight seasons, and is probably the single most famous work he has done. But it doesn't stop there. He founded the Cousteau Society to protect ocean life, was awarded the Medal of Freedom by President Reagan, he was honored by France with membership in the French Academy, became director of the Oceanographic Museum of Monaco, founded the Underseas Research Group at Toulon, and he headed the Con Shelf Saturation Dive Program, an experiment where people lived and worked underwater for extended periods of time. And the list goes on. He believed that when one man, for whatever reason, has the opportunity to lead an extraordinary life, he has no right to keep it to himself. As he was involved in so many projects, he was clearly a man who lived by his beliefs. In 1979, his son Philippe, one of the world's first scuba divers, a photographer, filmmaker, author and pilot, tragically died in a seaplane accident at the young age of 38. A decade later, after 53 years of marriage, his wife Simone died with cancer in December. Six months later, he married Francine Triplett, with whom he already had two children. In 1993, Cousteau's son Jean-Michel, who had followed in his father's footsteps, becoming a well-known marine biologist himself, had become estranged from his father and left the Cousteau Society. He started his own business in 1995, Cousteau's Fiji Island Resort, and eventually became involved in legal proceedings for his use of the family name. Jacques Cousteau did not like his son using the Cousteau name at all, though they would eventually settle their differences. On June 25, 1997, Jacques-Yves Cousteau suffered a fatal heart attack, ending an era of fame and heightened awareness for the undiscovered riches of the Earth's oceans.
Cousteau has given people the opportunity to see and experience things they would otherwise not have the chance to. After his death, CNN remembered him by saying, For millions of people who see the ocean only through the porthole of television, the voice of the sea had a soft French accent.